Bungalow Bill here. Today, we have a new release on the Alpha Test Branch, previously the Beta Test Branch, 3.4.7. And, as previously, these changes are subject to more changes before they get released to stable. There have been further changes to the collision system, which is why we have this drone circling before us here. So now collisions without rams still use the kinetic energy storage system. So when this vehicle is traveling around, damage done stationary target, 87,000 damage. As the construct moves, it gains damage that gets done by these rams during collisions. Well, even without rams, that system will now be used. Haven't tested exactly how strong it is. It's so stronger than before, and before, even without rams, I uh, routinely decimated my own vehicles. Ram and basic collision AP up from 5 to 10. Kinetic damage storage is up by 33%. Kinetic damage regen is up by 10%. So, buff all around. The fact that constructs and rams use the same system suggests that the damage done will be the same. It's just a question of whether or not you take damage back. Spinning rams... Also use the appropriate fraction of energy from the main construct on contact. On top of that, they use 5% of the remaining energy from the spinner for each ram and hit. So once I spawn in an enemy vehicle, which I'm going to do soon, these rams are, the spin block these rams are on is going to start to spin. It spins a little bit more slowly than it could because that used to be optimal. Now I think it's just sort of the faster you spin it, the better. But they'll switch over to showing kinetic energy stored on the sub-object, and for the last patch, when I did this test, it was pathetically weak because there was not enough kinetic energy stored in the sub-construct, and it was not gaining any of the kinetic energy from the main construct. Also, sort of thrown into this block of the patch notes is that steam and drill parts have a 0.4 drag modifier from the front with no clearance requirement. So, on the previous patch, I did note that Okay, it still says 0.2 in the tooltip, uh, but presumably it's 0.4. I did note that these had these had clearance requirements from the left or the right. Now it's just 0.2 front. Anyway, I'm going to do the same test as before with the Mobula. This time, I'm not putting my, my plane... Actually, I'll put my plane to god mode. It'll get killed by the Mobula missiles, or maybe even the um, Mobula particle cannon if I come in from the bottom. I'm going to check the tooltips again. Right, so the stored impact damage from the spin block is kind of pathetic because it's not spinning that fast. But now, and probably doesn't have enough mass, I did try to make it as light as possible because before it didn't matter, so it's made out of lightweight alloy just so that this vehicle maneuvers better. But now, the damage done is way higher because it's using the main construct damage as well. Of course we miss. Unfortunately, we don't get a head-on collision this time, which will change things a little bit. Okay, now we've actually done damage. This is not... This is not the devastating damage that this craft used to do. Previously, if you check out the video, the Mobula would have been already destroyed. However, this is a significant improvement to how, how it was before. To the extent where, and by before I mean 3.4.4, so now this actually works. And we looks like we've AI deaded the Mobula, she went into the Onyx Watch fleet coloration, which is my current fleet coloration. And we've stopped spinning, we got kind of stuck, but you know, that's fine. Custom control surfaces changes slash fixes. They now automatically set up their control axes. So, I did notice that I had to do all of these manually before. Let's look for the pivots. Uh, 
And yep, ya is automatically set up. In addition to that, mirror versions have been added for the 2 to 4 meter custom pivots, so these are mirrored properly. If you noticed the last video that I did, 3.4.4, when I tried when I tried this, I didn't show it on camera, but I had a vehicle with one pointing up and one pointing down. It's because they didn't mirror properly. They also have an option for switching output on reverse. Reverse angle and going backwards. And that is on by default. So people were complaining that you couldn't get your craft to steer properly with these going backwards, unlike simple rotors. Why you'd want to uncheck this is beyond me, but at least it is checked by default, so that's good. Propeller changes slash fixes. Let's build on this thing so that we follow it properly. Propeller hubs only start losing efficiency below 90% clearance. I think people didn't like the fact that they were getting penalized when they were kind of using these the way it felt like you were supposed to, with sort of this cross bracing under it. I'm still losing efficiency here because I am under 90% clearance but I'm not losing as much efficiency as I was before. Time for propellers to fully spin up reduced by 30%. So these are at 1.1 seconds. That means they would have been at about 1.4 seconds before. This vehicle was incredibly unstable due to how long these were taking to spin up. It's, these are, this craft is likely going to still be a bit unstable, but probably not as unstable as it was before. And this sort of thing makes it very hard for it to successfully get to the place where it would like to stay still. But probably doing a better job than before. So this one now is almost at 100% efficiency. Trusses now count as ducks for the purpose of blocking propulsion from every side. So that should give me a half blocker from this truss. Slowly fills in, half blocker. Trusses. I did ask this on the Discord. Trusses should still be drag blockers, but not propulsion blockers, which I believe is different from ducks, which I do not believe block drag. Power scale for propellers doesn't change maximum rotation speed, only power use and thrust output. So this is visual. It just means how fast it looks like this thing is spinning. Propeller hubs not supported from either the top or bottom are now properly destroyed, even if the ends of some blades are touching other blocks. This is a bug that I reported. Um, so these propeller blades end here. You used to be able to do this, and then this, and that blade wouldn't fly off like that. It looks like undo didn't bring it back except as dead blocks. If we get close enough to Rambot though, he'll repair it. Rambot is sitting on the bottom of the ocean, so he's struggling with that a little bit. Fixed power draw for some propeller setups with zero clearance. Presumably that means that you could fully block a propeller and they still draw power. But I don't know why you would do that. Orphaned propeller blades do not disconnect when connection rules are off. That used to be really annoying. If you turned on connection rules, you weren't able to just do this. Improved clearance checks. I have no idea what that means. Physics changes slash fixes. You may notice that this vehicle is looking even sadder than it did the last time. Oh, we will get there. Added extra sanity checks for, win, for wing and sail force output. Prevents a speed feedback loop with very low drag spin block vehicles. This is probably an upper, an upper cap on it. I wasn't aware of whether or not they did, but sails probably take apparent wind into account. Sort of like they do in real life, except probably a lot worse. The wing thing is that if you built a, if you built an ornithopter like this, a lot of people you may have seen videos on the Discord of them hitting appreciable fractions of the speed of light before slamming into the seafloor or going up into space. I had similar experiences because wings create a force output based on velocity of, over a certain direction. If you just created a big block of wings. If it moved at all, it would start moving in an orthogonal direction, and if it tumbled, it would see that velocity and start moving even faster in another orthogonal direction. And it would kind of move in this spiral and keep accelerating until it 
its velocity hit scientific notation, and it eventually hit something and destroyed itself. Light blocks have 0.1 drag, half of wedges, prevents physics problems with zero drag spin block vehicles. Yeah, so Drabo was saying that that there were there were issues with vehicles that had way too low drag that were causing significant mathematical problems. I wasn't aware that wedges were only 0.2 drag. These are the wrong blocks. It must be one meter. Okay, so it's half of one meter wedge. It's still way, not way higher. It's twice as much as a four meter wedge. Uh, trusses also have the same block, the same drag as a one meter wedge. Subconstruct main blocks directly on the main construct. Add one block worth of drag on the main construct. So, subobjects, one axis turret. Previously, this wouldn't create drag if I put it down. Now it's the same as if I put a wood block down or something. The same with spin blocks and pistons and that sort of thing. Non-structural plate blocks with so a weight less than one now have a weight of three. There's probably an issue with making vehicles that had too low a weight. Okay, well, it says weight one. Uh, presumably it's, weight, it's actually weight three. The tooltips are often a bit slow to update. Precision spin block speed in rotate to angle mode is limited by mass of the construct, like for turrets, but more lenient. Small spinners with a single propulsion block are now 350 degrees to 600 degrees per second. Big chunks of armor are, are about 100 degrees per second. Yeah, so they used to be able to move the same speed as in continuous rotation. Now they don't. So that's why that's why this old girl ain't flapping anymore. This this vehicle is done. There is there is nothing that can be done to save her anymore. So I'm going to have a few interceptor type vehicles to build once I have the time. Supposedly the EMP and impact debug tools have the same right click UI expl the explosive one does. Excellent. In the last video, I was clicking about a bajillion times. Piston max extension rate up from 2 meters per second to, to 6 meters per second, which triples it. Uh, people were complaining that they had to stack pistons because they were too slow. Effective speed limit for wings on powered spinners is increased based on power use. Relatively weak only for novelty use. Well, I, okay. If it's only for novelty use, I don't get why it would be in here. Why bother? Connected serial pistons on separate crankshafts now share their stat systems when only one has a boiler connection. That seems like a very, very specific case. I could demonstrate a way to do that, but I don't even get why I would. Crank gearboxes now can't get stuck in their old priority when it is changed from their UI. I don't actually know how to have gotten them stuck before. Flat base damage up from 80% to 90% of HE, about an 11% boost, makes it more attractive compared to kinetic sea whiz. Simple riders also work upside down. Previous change, the rudder block was made so that it had to be forward, back, and left, right oriented with the main construct. I guess you can do this now. It doesn't say that you can do this, though. Propeller hub mesh can now be hidden. Propeller mesh handling is faster. Hydrofoil mesh can now be hidden. People were complaining a little bit about these as well. They couldn't deco the new propeller blades to look exactly how they want to, and there's a little bit of decoration handling, and Drava was also complaining about it because he didn't want to do it. And there have been a few steam changes as well. So, in this vehicle, which is the reason that I haven't posted anything to the workshop in a long time, I am using the new belts. Here, there's still an issue when you hit P that the, the, blocks appear, the belt block appears somewhere else. I think it's down here somewhere. I thought I saw it for a second. Uh, is that it? Here it is, yeah. So, still an issue like that. Haven't seen that in the past change notes, but I haven't seen anyone else complain about it on the Discord. And a lot of these, I believe, are only fixed because I complained about them on the Discord. Transmission kinetic loss reduced to 50%. Transmission max energy per second was also doubled when crank wheel motor, when crank wheel connections were added, missing from the notes there. Okay, I didn't even notice that either. That the output energy per second 
can be massively increased. It looks like it can only take the kinetic shaft energy as input energy per second. So for this vehicle to transmit any more than... Oh no, never mind. The output energy is higher than the input energy, whatever. Those, the tooltips are probably still a little bit old. And these can only use so much energy anyway. I actually have both of these steam engines connected together. So if I lose either steam engine, the remaining one can still, can still energize the three propellers. Crank wheel kinetic storage reduced to two times shaft for small, three times shaft for medium and large. The one by one wheel now has the same maximum kinetic energy as shafts. I would have to imagine that the issue was that it was just taking way too long to spin this sort of stuff up and down. Crank motor kinetic energy per power reduced from 0.65 to 0.6. I thought that was in 3.4.4 as well. I could be wrong about that. And that refers to like, the simple crank motor blocks, which are these. The, uh, the issue was that they weren't sufficiently appealing to for or to make you want to use steam instead. Steam wheels cannot connect to wheels already taken by other shafts spinning in the opposite direction. So supposedly there was a thing that you could connect or that you can flip the shaft orientation. I don't see it though. Propellers slash drills connected to multiple crank motors broadcast their output request to all motors now. So that worked properly with steam engines, but before, if you used two crank motors to power one propeller, because you actually kind of had to, if you wanted to get full power output on the largest propellers, it, it would actually only use one of the crank motors. Steam wheels placed in prefabs now properly wipe their connection and ID. I saw people say that, that you could um, connect, connect these wheels when they're at 90 degree angles to each other. It was probably using the prefabs. It was probably not done like this. All right, that's it for the changes. I'm kind of interested to see if this ship moves any faster than it did before or not. Either this rudder's on backwards or these propellers are backwards. Because they're certainly disagreeing with each other. Which is, I believe, why she was turning so slowly. Anyway, 27 meters per second, the same as before. These propellers are being put at a maximum throughput. So the only difference should really be that they should be consuming less power. However, it looks like these steam engines are still operating at a fairly reasonable percentage to get them through. It should be a bit lower than before, though. I imagine that the kinetic losses are not super high compared to compared to the actual power being output. So what is it? Kinetic loss for this part at max RPM, 100 per second. So if it was cut in half, it would have been 200 per second before. But the kinetic energy used per second is, on average for the two engines, is going to be 4,500. And there's also other kinetic losses, but yeah, the kinetic losses are pretty low. Still a small buff, but not, not immensely impactful. Anyway, that is it for these patch notes. I'll, I hope you all enjoyed watching, and I hope to see you in the future.